Hi, I'm Annie Botticelli, and welcome to my May 2019 horoscope report for you, where I will give you the need to knows for your sign, plus talk about the general transits that no doubt will be affecting you. I'll let you know the places where the stars are in beautiful harmony and the possibilities that are open from those connections, as well as the places where the stars are in conflict and the challenges that could come from those connections. And resources, ideas, tips on how to use that energy and understand the energy to create alchemy in your life and have the most graceful and productive month possible. Definitely go to my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com, where I have lots of resources for you on your journey, including a very extensive astrology blog. You can see my new moon and full moon blogs that can help you make the most of those portals of energy that open every couple of weeks. You can sign up for a live reading at my site, and you can also sign up for my astrology apprenticeship program if you resonate with how I teach astrology and you would love to learn. Check out my new book, Radical Prayer, Transform Your Life and the World in 28 Days, which is an Amazon bestseller. You can see that on Amazon or at RadicalPrayerBook.com. So let's see what the stars have for you this month. Hi Cancer friends, I'm so excited to share with you my insights for you for May 2019 and the time before and after now because most of the time astrological transits, unless you're basing them just on purely very quick moving superficial transits, which I don't do, <laughs> the storylines that are occurring for someone in any individual month, a lot of the things at play have to do with things leading up until this time and things coming after. So I will let you know where the short term energy is and what areas of focus you can expect to come into the forefront, but I also want to talk about some longer term themes. So we're going to keep some things light and go in deep with other things. I'm calling the theme of this month for Cancer's Crazy Crossroads. Whenever planets are in a certain angle to the planet, in, you know, the sign in question, it creates angles and those certain angles create crossroads. And the way that I know this for sure is because I've done thousands of live readings, countless beyond that charts for things like horoscopes and other things. And there are certain aspects that I see that whenever they're present, they bring certain things. <laughs> and so the ones that I want to talk about today have to do with these crossroads. So there are a lot of planets that are moving through the sign of Capricorn. And the sign of Capricorn is at 180 degree angle to the placements in Cancer. So there either has been in recent times, is active, actively right now or coming soon, this energy of opposition from three planets, the transiting south node, which rules a lot of karma, Saturn, which also rules a lot of karma, and Pluto, which also rules a lot of karma. So we have like a lot of things that are coming up in opposition to cancer placements that are burning things off for you. And I know that a lot of cancers are shaking their heads saying, I feel that, <laughs> I feel that stuff being burnt off has been pretty intense. Besides also the eclipse cycles with um, Cancer and Capricorn, there's just, it's just a busy time in the cosmos for you all. Something else that's going on is the transiting North Node has been in your sign. And we haven't really talked about that, but I've had some requests to discuss that. So that is something else that's happening. And the planet Chiron is in an angle where it is bringing crossroads. Okay, so the earlier placements, you all, let's see, early and middle, depending on your placement, it's really more the earlier middle, depending on your chart, but you would be feeling it. Chiron has a very notable tagline, which is the energy of feeling victimized. Now, not to say that some later cancer placements couldn't also be having this experience, but it's likely not triggered from this crossroads with Chiron that I'm talking about. But Chiron in the sign of Aries brings a stressed angle to the cancer placements and especially for you early folks. So basically just a reminder again, early cancer friends, you are the June born um, or zero to nine degrees. Middle is about July 1st through July 10th or 10 to 19 degrees. And late is like um, July 11th through the rest of the sign or 20 to 29 degrees. Okay, so the early degree placements have had Chiron dancing along in this difficult angle 
to your cancer placement. And it brings this woundedness. Sometimes it actually brings a physical issue where you're, you're wounded. Sometimes it brings just emotional issues or things in relationship or with money or work or, you know, it's different for each person. But this is the spot that if you can heal it, it has a massive amount of power that you can take it and it's pure alchemy. The centaur Chiron, who is this archetypal energy, was actually a trainer of heroes. So all the stories with these humans that had like major um, victories, like Hercules and you know some of these other ones, Chiron was their trainer. So basically, he was the trainer of heroes. And he's the trainer of heroes in our charts as well. So whenever there's a difficult aspect, Chiron is working to bring that, whatever that weak spot is, into strength. And the places of weakness can absolutely turn into places of strength, but it requires inner and outer alchemy. So you have to be willing to do the work, learn the lessons, and move on. The energy of crossroads for some other of the cancer placements has to do with these um, placements in Capricorn that we talked about, karma blasting, just kind of opposing. And this very much has to do with, and this is for all cancers, the story of cancer versus Capricorn, your emotional world and your um, outer external experience, your work and your home, your upbringing and your current life, your family versus your work, and just this storyline of um, emotion and action, like outer action. So a lot of energy and overstimulation going on there for cancer placements. In general, as the planets move into Taurus, this is a very favorable um, situation for cancers because it creates a 60 degree angle, which is super sweet. So at some point throughout the whole month, Taurus placements will be kissing your cancer placements. So bringing vitality, bringing opportunities, bringing sweet spots, bringing harmony, and interspersed with this sweetness though is the other planets moving through Aries, not just Chiron, which we talked about, but Mercury and Venus. And those are making awkward 90 degree angles to your cancer placement. So there's awkwardness, there's pressure, there's like needing to take action, but not knowing what to do or needing to take action, but not wanting any change and just kind of being comfortable and happy and not wanting to be bothered, but kind of change is trying to come. Um, so there's that sort of annoyance going on, but overridingly, this energy of earth is very grounding to cancer energy and can help you to be very, very, very productive. Okay, so let's see what else I want to talk about. So Mars is going to move into Cancer um, not too far into the month, and this is a very sweet placement. So whenever we have Mars moving through our sign, um, well, I guess it's sweet. I'm an optimist, so of course my first inkling is to, to think of what the good things are about it. And the good things about it are that it can spur you to action in a language that you understand. Not everybody speaks the lang language that cancer people speak. You know, it's a, it's a very gentle, emotional language, and if you're not, if someone isn't appealing to your um, emotional perceptions, then sometimes it doesn't register. Um, so when Mars is in Cancer, it's like action from outside and inside is speaking a language that you understand, which can bring great productivity. And I love, love, love this month for doing things. However, there are some things we have to get through. And when we talk about the general transits, I'll talk more about that. But specifically mid-month, there's like if you need to launch something or do something important, big steps. I love the time mid-month and I'll go over some other dates and things to consider. The transiting north node, oh wait, staying with Mars for a second. So as Mars moves through your sign, it could bring up emotions, but it can also, like I said, speak the language that will help you to take action in ways that resonate with how you are. The transiting north node in your sign is a really special placement. And transiting north node tells us the area of experience that leads us to find keys to our highest expression in this lifetime. The North Node in the natal chart is our areas of highest expression in this lifetime. So I focus heavily on those in readings because in my mind, what could be more important than understanding your highest expression in this lifetime, right? So it tells you your Dharma and what you're here to do. The North Node in transit has to do with where keys are placed for your own personal destiny. And 
In this case, they're placed in how you are, your cancer placements. So this is a beautiful boost to getting on track with your highest expression and feeling like you're doing what you came here to do. So throughout the time that the North Node is moving here, it's, and, and really later degree placements, you've had this experience already, kind of this chance for activating. Um, and middle and early, see the North Node is going backwards, so it's kind of hit the end ones first, which is unusual, all the rest of the ones go the other way around. But you middle and early degree placements for the rest of the year and then into next year, you'll have this North Node kind of giving you nudges to get on track with your destiny. Spirit will be whispering louder to you, you know, hints might be coming in through other resources like this is what you're supposed to do. And a lot of times those keys are going to come through quiet intuition and emotional resonance because the energy of cancer is that way. You know, it's a, it's a quietly introspective, intuitive, um, emotional based focus. So the keys to your highest expression will come whispering through those uh, venues. Okay, so those things are on my mind. Let's see, um, I think those were the things I most wanted to talk about. Okay, so I'm going to drop the charts in and I'm going to show you some visuals on the things that we discussed. And then I'll come back on the screen and talk more about these general transits, where to place your launches and why, and some other th things I think you need to know for this month. So let's look at the charts now. Okay, so just the visual on the early Cancer, June born zero to nine degrees, middle Cancer, July 1st through 10th, or 10 to 19 degrees, and late Cancer, July 11th, through and or through the rest of the sign and 20 to 29 degrees. Okay, so we talked about the energy of Chiron here, coming and making a square to especially the early degree placements. That is a point of conflict, pressure, challenge, looking to heal and strengthen any victim mentality in your being so that you can become more empowered and turn your weaknesses into strengths. Okay, in general, for all signs, oh, not all signs, all cancer placements, sorry, these other more quick moving placements in Aries are making those squares that are bringing uncomfortable urges or, or necessity for action when you might not be clear or when you might not want things to change. It's an awkward angle. It happens around this time every year. All cancer placements are going through that. But very soon, these Aries placements are moving into Taurus, so we'll have the Sun, Mercury, and Venus come and make beautiful 60-degree angles with your Cancer placements, and those are super sweet, um, bringing lots of blessings and opportunities um, in, you know, for expanding your vitality, um, creativity, communication, things with love and money, blessings with your self-esteem, um, recognition, things like that. So I'm using the early chart, but the things I'm speaking of are true for early, middle, and late degree. All right, so we talked about other crossroads having to do with, well, let's use, this is more, actually, let me use the late degree chart. Some of you middle degree placements will be feeling this, but the late degree placements are really featured here with these, um, these planets that are opposing and creating, you know, part of those radical crossroads, the Chiron placement, those were radical crossroads. And this is just pressure being pulled in this direction and this direction. But it helps you access your superhero self. That's what I always love about this angle, which is 180 degree angle, where the pressure makes you an overstimulation makes you access your superhero self. And sometimes these, this angle here is not necessarily bad. It's just a lot. It's just overstimulation. And sometimes that could be because things are working out really well in both sectors that are getting stimulated. So like your work is expanding at the same time as your home is expanding and those things are good. It's just trying to find the balance. So it doesn't have to be a bad thing. It's just definitely in your face, especially you late to great placements. All right, so some other things to note here. We've got the 10th house of career and work is being accentuated. There's early, there's middle, and there's late. So you all have this um, opportunity to focus on 
your place out in the world. Sometimes this has to do with relationships with father or father figures or authority figures. Sometimes this has to do with work and career. But for those of you who don't work or don't care about your career, this could have to do with your life purpose. And just kind of like what you're doing out in the world, what you're supposed to be doing, what, what wants to be given a voice within you. Okay, so this energy of transiting North Node we talked about here has been working on relate degree placements, but is going to cycle back and affect the middle and earlier degree placements even more. But the whole time it's in Cancer, it still will be positively affecting all Cancer placements, giving you some keys to your highest destiny. Okay, so now let's go to the transit chart. You'll see me come back on the screen and I'll give you some more need to knows that will definitely be affecting you. So I'm calling the theme of May 2019 for all signs, conquer the obstacles and gain the rewards because this month we've got all kinds of obstacles, but there's actually more sweet energy than there are challenging energies. And there are going to be things to get through, but you have a lot on your side for getting past them with flying colors. The factors that flip the switch towards action in April are still at play very much this month in May. So we have the first month in a long time without having a personal planet retrograde, either shadow period or the actual retrograde as part of the equation. So in April, even though Mercury was not retrograde, the whole first half of April, the post shadow period from Mercury was still in effect. Now here in May, we don't have Mercury, Venus, Mars, the personal planets at all retrograde, nor do we have any of their shadow periods for the transit. So we don't have that to impede progress. At the same time, there are multiple placements in very grounded Taurus and Jupiter is still retrograde and Saturn is now going retrograde. And all of these factors can serve to balance ambitions, adding more of a streamlined approach. So you'll hear me talking about this theme for a while because there are multiple factors in the stars that are really um, telling us to get super efficient with our energy. So you'll have more opportunities this month to really get stuff done, but at the same time, there are challenges to overcome and there is this sort of um, reevaluation of the things that you've brought out and checking in and strengthening to see what you need for future expansion. There are many great aspects in Gemini or with Mercury, which rules Gemini this month. Um, so that's going to bring lots of communication, lots of movement, lots of busyness, brilliant social opportunities. We'll have advancement of writing and other creative projects, um, anything having to do with travel, upgrading communication devices and transport modes of transportation. All of those things are in the Mercury Gemini domain. Uh, so expect a lot of um, focus in those areas of life. And there are a lot of beautiful aspects that can help boost those efforts. At the same time, there are also a number of clashes with the energy. Um, I'd say more good effects than challenging ones, but we still have to look out for them and you still will have to overcome them. So there, there could be some um, mini slowdowns or drama uh, that come from those challenges. As with April, in May, there's also a hurriedness that goes along with a lot of these energies, and that is um, could lend itself to unnecessary injuries or accidents or um, wasting time or just not paying attention to things that can come from that distractedness. So definitely be extra aware and breathe and try to stay centered as you move your body and as you're communicating and as you're carrying through all of these things that want to come through this month. So Jupiter is still in retrograde, and this um, is one of the factors I referred to earlier. It's asking us to pull in a little bit and to carefully evaluate these next steps. So we wanna conserve energy while making the most impact. And Jupiter was on an expansion spree for a while, and things are getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and then as it's been in retrograde, now it's a time to shore up the foundation for the future expansion. So the theme of creating systems that fix situations where you were spread too thin is um, is going to continue this month. And also, um, as with April, the energy of um, fewer brilliantly placed 
efforts rather than a whole bunch of haphazard efforts the best that you can. Now it's not going to be super easy to do that in some ways because we do have a lot of energy in Aries, we do have a lot of energy in Gemini besides that grounded Taurus which does kind of the glue that helps it all hold together. Um, but it will be busy, it will be scattered, and there will be a lot going on. In general, there are a ton of awesome transits this month. And like I said, more sweet days than challenging ones. But for the beginning of the month and the end of the month, especially like everything away from just like the exact middle of the month, pretty much every time there's a sweet aspect, there is a super challenging one. And a lot of times the same exact day. And it's just kind of crazy. So that means that there will be obstacles to get through to gain the rewards, which is why I call the theme of the month that, you know, expect some challenges. It's not going to be like you just walk up to the gates of the place that you're trying to go and you just walk in, you know? <laughs> it always reminds me of Paperboy, that game Paperboy, when like the guy's just trying to deliver his newspapers and there's like crazy people and dogs and stuff just like trying to get in his way, right? That's what life feels like sometimes. But you can maneuver around it and get the papers delivered this month for sure, but it's going to take... Uh, work to get to your goals and consistency. So there's a beautiful flow of sweet transits between May 11th and May 18th. There are some challenging ones around the 11th and there are some challenging ones around the 18th, but all the time in between there, like right in the mid month, is just sweet aspects, so many sweet aspects every day. So if you have to do something important and you need to have oomph without antagonism, your best time of the month to launch and try to push things through is the middle of the month because that will be where you don't have this contradictory um, force uh, at every moment like there is for the rest of the month. Okay, so if you want more details about what aspects are happening on what days and what can go along with that, definitely sign up for my free email newsletter, AnnieHelpsYou.com. And when you sign up for my free email newsletter, you also get as a wonderful free gift, my entire 28 day virtual coaching package for free. So that will keep you on the list where you'll get these monthly write-ups a month ahead, where I um, give you the details and the overview of the month so you can see the days that have challenges and what you're working with there and the ones that are sweets if you're trying to plan ahead of time as many people are. I'm going to hit just a couple of highlights um, and then you can see the rest of the details at AnnieHelpsYou.com when you sign up for my free newsletter. Okay, so in the beginning of the month, the first couple of days, we've got sweet aspects and challenging ones just right next to each other. Um, we've got the new moon on May 4th. That's the new moon in Taurus, so definitely make your new moon wishes. And you can see my blog about that for more details if you just search for making powerful new moon in Taurus wishes. Annie, you will find it. Um, but this has a beautiful aspect with Neptune on that day. So I expect some sweetness there sandwiched in between some of the challenges. Look out for overexertion and overcommitment um, in those days, like right there at the end of the week. Um, definitely take full advantage of those days between May 11th and May 18th for anything important, big steps, commitments, signing paperwork, you know, launching things. There are just like oh, so many beautiful things. I also love travel at that time. And really this whole month is amazing for travel. You just have to be really careful. Um, as you're doing it and aware. Careful and awareful is what I say. Okay, um, let's see. There was one other thing I wanted to point out here. The full moon on May 18th. The full moon is at 27 degrees of Scorpio and that also has a conjunction with Venus um, and Uranus. So this is really important. So let's just take this piece by piece. We've had multiple months in a row where we've had full moons that are centered around relationships, okay? Because we had two Libra full moons in a row, um, and now we have a Scorpio full moon. And the Libra and Scorpio are these relationship houses. So there may be some major drama at this time, or there could be wonderful breakthroughs within relationships or of any kind, or um, things coming to be revealed that were hidden before, um, or just sweet moments, you know, a culmination of something sweet within a relationship. Um, of any kind. So fullness, drama, completion, breakthroughs, things like that in the areas of Scorpio. But the wild card here is this energy of Venus and in, in, um, Venus and Uranus because whenever Uranus is involved, it's like things out of the blue, surprises, jostling, and it could be better for, for better or worse, you know? So Venus rules love and money and self-esteem. So Uranus coming in here often can mean like conflict or fight or something surprise within a relationship that is a challenge. But sometimes it's like, 
a a marriage, uh, you know, proposal or something that comes out of the blue. And that's a, a culmination of this, you know, relationship energy. So it could really be something sweet like that, but we just never know when Uranus is involved. So expect intensity. I always, you know, I, we all have to live our lives and we have to work and do what we have to do. But if you can leave the full moon a little bit open so that if some challenges come up and you can be present for them, then you might be grateful for that. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, so try to be well rested. That's the other thing that I recommend when Uranus is involved because if something comes out of the blue and you have to deal with it, at least if you're well rested and calm going into it, it will be easier for you to handle it in the most graceful way. In general, since the energy of Venus and Uranus are both in Taurus, this is, you know, earth energy. This is like ground breaking, ground shaking energy. And sometimes it can be quite literally. Uranus and Taurus has already been very much associated with the um, waking up of the volcanoes over the last year. And, you know, the other earth changes that come from that and earth effects that come from that and wild weather and things like that um, that are related to the, the, the earth and the atmosphere. So, you know, just kind of be aware at those times that there's more energy and more power and just follow your intuition as far as where you're supposed to be and what you're supposed to be doing. Okay, so those are the things that are most on my mind for this month. Definitely go to AnnieHelpsYou.com, sign up for my free email newsletter, get my Shine 28-day virtual coaching program for free, get these written version of these um, general reports in your inbox a month early. You can sign up for a live reading there. You can see more about my vocational courses that I have, including my astrology apprenticeship program, uh, where I can teach you how to use astrology for your personal or professional uh, purposes. And I have lots of other things on my website, like subliminal um, audios that help you to train your brain in the direction of things that you want. So you can see all that at AnnieHelpsYou.com. Definitely check out my book, Radical Prayer, Transform Your Life in the World in 28 Days. If you are interested in, if you're a spiritual seeker and you want to align your energies with that of the divine and have the most easy, graceful life possible, this is your little friend. I made it in a nice portable size. It's a beautiful book on the inside and out for you to take with you and use the power of affirmation and prayer to transform your life and the world in positive ways. So you can see that at RadicalPrayerBook.com. It's an Amazon bestseller. You can go to my husband's website, IamHelios.com, I-A-M-H-E-L-I-O-S.com. He's got all kinds of goodies there. He does astrology readings and tarot readings. And if you'd like written horoscopes by me, plus other lifestyle blogs for natural living, you can go to Cozy by SweetStarlight.com and see my written horoscopes for you for each sign a month early each month. So I hope you have a wonderful month and I'll see you next month. Bye.